Hail, glorious leader Alabast, and also that god guy. This is the Alabastian language, a language in the process of being reconstructed. This is a very early reconstruction, subject to change. Um, this is all tentative. This is simply my best guess based on the sources that I have and the work done so far. Alabastian is the original language, the first language, the ancestor of all others on earth. It was invented by the glorious leader as a better alternative to the tongue of the angels. It has been mostly unchanged since the Garden of Eden, but several dialects do exist. Now the heterodox critics claim that it is a dialect of German closely related to Yiddish, but they can claim that all they want as we found them at the state. Its systematization is a work in progress. Um, sources mainly describe it as sounding like coughing, sneezing, and other bodily noises. If a non-native speaker were to pronounce it correctly, it would inflict physical harm on him. That is how you know you, whether you're doing it right or not. Um, correct pronunciation should cause you physical pain. Sources are found and translated using the Urim and Thummim, which is to say I put rocks in a hat and stare at them until the answer comes to me. These are the consonants. Again, this is tentative. Um, I shall explain. I, I shall call the um, letters by their English names. So I have here the capital letter representing the transcription in Alabastian, because it is illegal to confuse the High Kaiser. The writing system is quite simple. Each letter corresponds to a single phoneme. Generally speaking, I, I believe sometimes combinations of letters are an exception to this, but generally speaking, each letter represents a single phoneme. Each phoneme is represented by a single letter. So here you can see the um, capital letter in, on the left representing the transcription and the uh, phoneme on the right representing the, the phoneme. So I shall go through them, calling the letters by their English names. Some notes on this. All consonants are aspirated, all of them. Any consonant, anything perceived by the speakers as a single consonant is aspirated. Um, and you'll note glottalization on some of these. Glottalization means it's more of a cluster in which the consonant terminates in a, a glottal stop. I am not proficient in the international phonetic alphabet, so the transcriptions may not be correct. I shall attempt to pronounce them. We have a nasal, a creaky voiced nasal, represented by the letter N. <sighs> the letter T, representing a bilabial ejective stop, terminating in a glottal. <laughs> in this case, the aspiration comes after the glottalization. So dorsal, you'll note I have dorsal here, because there is no phonemic distinction between velar and uvular consonants, so I have put them both in one column. So here we have a uvular stop, terminating in a glottal stop, <coughs> presented by the letter C. Uh, the letter K represents a glottal stop, number of aspirated. <coughs> there is a bilabial two bilabial affricates, the F representing the unvoiced, and the V representing the voiced. So, V and V. W represents a labiodental affricate that is also glottalized. V. Z represents, um, well, there's a wide range of allophones for this one. It can be anywhere from, from a simple alveolar, unvoiced alveolar affricate Sir, to a voiced palatal African, so uh, yeah, right. and again, it can be anywhere in between. It could be ch, it could be sir. It it it's very there's a wide range of of um range for this. Uh, so I, I think I shall just pronounce it sir in order to be simple. Uh, there was no voiced or unvoiced distinction. There was a wide range. of Allophones, I believe. Then we have H, which represents the dorsal African, which again, th this is a uvular African. So. Huh. L represents a lateral alveolar fricative. So I believe this is the similar to the Welsh sound. 
S represents um, the palatal of fricative, and we've always drawn voice. So, xia or ya. Now, for the dorsal fricatives, there are two of these which were perceived as the same phoneme. So, um, h and h. These were perceived as one phoneme, and they were not represented by a single letter because they were only found in consonant clusters, which I shall explain on the next slide. Um, there are two bilabial trills. He represents the unvoiced bilabial trill, denoting the glottal stop. <coughs> B representing a simple voiced bilabial trill. <coughs> R represented the uvular trill. Um, I do not know if I can do a uvular trill. It may be um, more of a fricative, but I shall do my best. <coughs> and again, I believe that this probably had a large degree of. Um, variation, and these are mainly approximations of, of the sources I found. There was a bilabial click. I do not know if I've transcribed this one correctly. It was a sort of inhaling, hissing sound. So, <laughs> M, representing a bilabial dental impulsive with the, the glottal, so this is a very difficult one. <laughs> and a uvular impulsive glottal. Represented by the letter G. Moving on to more on the phonology and orthography. It uses the standard Latin alphabet, 26 letters. There are diacritical exceptions. I do not know what the vowels are yet. Um, I'm assuming for the most part they are there. IPA, um, with this exception that A represents A. The A with the diacritic sonnet is A, I believe. It's my approximation. Again, I don't actually know. And then, of course, there's E, which I shall approximate as A. The letter I, which I shall approximate as E. The letter O, which I approximate as O. The letter U, which I approximate as U. And the letter Y, which I approximate as U. Mm. But really, I only really have theories on A and A. This is, the vowels are very unclear. Right now. Uh, yes, all vowels are nasalized, so I believe. All right, now there are some consonant clusters, two consonant clusters, which are understood phonemically perceived as a single consonant, presented by a single consonant. Um, they're very difficult. The letter J represents this abomination. You can see it as the fricative beginning as a dorsal, and then moving into the velar, and finally the uvular, before terminating in a glottal stop, which is released in aspiration. <laughs> Q is never used in any words except in its own name, but apparently represents um, this one has a glottal stop as part of it, but releases as a <laughs> aspirated uh, F. I'm already lightheaded from doing this. As I said, this is a very painful language to speak. But the letter S um, is voiced between vowels and voiced consonants. If you know language, I think you know what I'm intimating here. Pronouns are kept simple to avoid confusing the high Kaiser. Gender does not exist in this language. There is no gender in this language, as women confuse the high Kaiser. The first person prefix is. The second person prefix is. The third person prefix is. Singular suffix is. Plural. Suffix is e. Now the first person plural <coughs> is exclusive we or us. Uh, there is no case, as case would be too confusing. The inclusive first person plural requires a combination of pronouns. So instead of we did this, if you wish to be, that would be exclusive. If you wish to be inclusive, you would have to say. Um, I and the, or 
Now there is one more person besides first, second, and third person. There's the best person, which is used to refer to the High Kaiser always and exclusively. Ach, possessive is formed by suffixing ein. <coughs> Here is some sample vocabulary. Enjoy as I slowly die. <laughs> this is a proper name, the name of our glorious leader, First High Kaiser. This is another proper name, roughly translating to heaven. <laughs> this means B. I don't yet know the TH cluster, so I'm not going to try. But anyway, this, this means cattle. Um, I, 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 in hindsight, I should not have put this on the list, but I wanted to show off that um, there's, for some reason there's a hyphen in it. Um, well, you know, it would be something like cut through, except cut doesn't mean through. God <laughs> That's the best I can do. This means daddy. <coughs> this means servant or minister. Okay. This means king. <laughs> this means um, assembly, congregation, church. Um, I, it's, it's really much closer to the ancient Greek. Ecclesia. Ecclesia. <laughs> Close enough. Leader of an... Sometimes a religious cleric, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this means emperor, specifically the leader of the Holy Bastion, Holy Alabastian Empire. Um, I'm, I just realized I forgot to include what X means, so I'm not going to try to pronounce Hylix because I don't know what the, the final letter is. But this is the chief cleric of the Alabastian Orthodox Church. <laughs> Meaning sky or heaven. Yeah. Meaning king. Oh, I, I don't know what TH means. Oops. But there's a special word for Catholic priest. I don't know what SCH means either. But, um, this this Kirche means um, it's a church or cult. Um, I'm writing a paper on this. <laughs> Meaning the leader of a district in the Alabastian Orthodox Church, sometimes compared to an archbishop. <coughs> this is the seventeenth letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Meaning the leader of a region in the Alabastian Orthodox Church. And uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, like I said, this is a work in progress, and uh, my pronunciation is still terrible. And um, yeah, the reconstruction, the reconstruction is very tentative. So if you, um, if anyone wants to help, actually, that would be greatly appreciated. But uh, that's it. Mm, that's. Mm, ma. 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 Uh, again, I'm not a native speaker. This is reconstructed. That is my best approximation. Mm.